Because several children of God are asking that question. I call it the valley of why me. A valley where you seem to be all alone. It looks as if you don't have brother, you don't have sister, you don't have father, you don't have mother. It's like you are just alone. You look around you, it's like you are going through what you are going through just alone. A valley where it looks as if everything is working against you. The valley called Why Me is a valley where it looks as if everything is against you. You look to the front, you don't see way out. You look to the back, you see battles. You look to the right and to the left, there are no encouragement. You just feel that, are you sure it is not finished for me? Now, that's the valley called, why me? God has sent me to answer that question this morning. And I want you to give me your heart. If you are holding your phone right now, please put your phone aside. I concentrate and focus on the altar here. Let the voice of the Lord locate you. Listen, our case study today in the service this morning is a man of God called Prophet Elijah. He too was in that valley in a particular time of his life. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 1 to verse 4. Now, those of you watching online, please open up your heart. Are you in that valley? You are tired of life. In fact, some of you have even gotten to the point you are contemplating. When, if it's for me to just die now, I don't mind because you don't see hope for yourself again. God sent me to you this morning and as I read, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and we told how he had slain all the prophets with the sword that he had killed the prophet of Baal. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. If I don't kill you the way you killed the prophets of Baal, he said, May gods deal with me. And when he saw, now don't forget, the woman spoke, but Elijah saw. Now, what makes his word to become a vision? It is when you overprocess it in your mind. Oti ro, o ro, o ro. Ah, ayabalo makpami ni woyola. Ah, talo magdami. Who will deliver me from the hands of the first citizen of our nation? The most powerful person. Because everybody knew us at that time that Ahab was the king, but Jezebel was the one ruling. So for Jezebel to threaten him, I don't know what is threatening you. Maybe bills are threatening you, and you, it has become a vision. You are no longer hearing. You are now seeing them. Seeing really clearly. The Bible says, and Elijah saw. Now, And when you start to see what you are supposed to be hearing, if care is not taken, you begin to become afraid. If care is not taken, you begin to gradually go into depression. If care is not taken, you begin to gradually isolate yourself, thinking and believing that there is no reason for you to remain on, life, on earth again. Now, when he saw, the Bible says he arose and did what? And went for his life. He abandoned everything he had labored for. Now, in the valley called Why Me, you conclude that you don't have anything again. Because the devil will not allow you to see what you have. He will only be showing you the things that are against you. He will be showing you the battles you are facing. Don't remove the scripture, please. I need it. Uh, he will only be showing you the battles you are facing. The Bible says he arose and went and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant. He left everything. Some of you have not left physically, but in your heart you have departed. You are just moving in the body. Sincerely, you have departed. That's why you no longer have joy again. In fact, when you are eating, you no longer have taste and joy for the food you are eating because you are, you are giving up on life. Show me verse 4. You are giving up on life. Elijah was giving up on life. But he himself went a day's journey. Where? Into the wilderness. What is the wilderness? That is the season of your life when you decide to say, I don't need friends anymore. I don't need anybody. I just want to be all alone. 
Nobody knows what I'm facing. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Otis Sumi, he went to the wilderness. Are you in the wilderness right now? God has sent me to you. Some of you are in the wilderness in your thinking. You no longer see excellence for living. The Bible says, and he came and sat down under a journey path three. And he requested for himself that he might die. Can you see? He started becoming a uh, suicider. He was now thinking, Oti Tong. Why me, Lord? The Bible says he said, I want to die. Requested for himself that he might die. And sat. Ah, and said, sorry, it's enough. Now, Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. He no longer saw hope for himself again. He started dreaming and thinking of the best thing for me to do now is for me to die. So many of you are in that valley. Now, watching me online, maybe you are in that valley right now. Yesterday, too, I was praying in the night and asking the Lord, Father, what will you have? Because God didn't speak a message to my heart until last night. Lord, what do you have for your people that I'm going to preach to in the service? And he kept saying to me, son, show them the answer. Show them to the, the answer to the, uh, uh, to the question, why me? Show them why they are still in the valley. Ha, hallelujah. And I started thinking of Elijah's case. Please, uh, Mr. Uh, fire me, or what's his name? Elijah, me. get me that, my illustration. You know, as he was, as, as I was meditating, over this scripture, you know what the Lord brought to my heart? The Lord took me to a football pitch. The Lord took me to a football pitch. Everybody look up. And I saw, I saw a great player put the ball down. Now, this great player was on the football pitch. You know what? One thing that everybody runs around for in a football pitch is this thing. Football. That's what every one of them is running. Now, listen. If you don't have this football in front of you, I want you to know that the opponents will not come around you. That's why you see that even in a football match, a goalkeeper at times can sit down. You know, a goalkeeper at times can quickly beckon, give me water to drink. But not the man that has football in front of him. Once you have football in front of you, you know what will happen to you? The enemies, the opponents will come around. Opponents don't go around goalkeepers except they bring the ball close to the net. When the ball gets to where the net is. You will see the opponent. You will now be saying, ah, is that not the goalkeeper that was sitting down the other time? You now see the goalkeeper running around. He too wants to defend his net so that the ball does not come into his net. Now, if the ball does not get to the defense line, the man at the defense might even be strolling. I mean, talking to the right wing uh, back or the left wing back. Let's work out to win this match, you see. Let's work out to win this match. But if the ball gets to him, you will notice that the opponents will face him. The opponents will always go around any player that has the ball in front of him or in his possession. Any player that has a ball in his possession, what will happen? Opponents will come. You know what God said to me? He said one of the reasons why so many of us are being faced with several challenges is because we have the ball of success in our possession. We have the destiny of success. Some of you don't know that it's because of what God has packaged in you that you are facing what you are facing. Say, I will not die now. I didn't hear you clearly. Say, I will not give up on life. Because if this ball is not in front of you, the enemy will notice you. The enemy will notice you. But you just wait until somebody passes the ball. Somebody pass the ball, so do anything. Straight, the enemies will start coming around. Challenges will start facing you. Then you are with the ball. You have the ball in front of you. You have several challenges. You are now thinking of, what do I do? Do I dribble? Do I, do I shoot the ball? Do I pass the ball? Listen, once the ball leaves your possession, you know what will happen? The enemies will move to the direction of the ball. That you are facing challenges is a clear sign that you are going somewhere. Say, I'm going somewhere. I say again, that you are facing challenges. It's a clear sign that you are, you are still relevant. 
People that are not relevant, there is no challenge around their life. Listen, you may not see the ball, but the opponent can see it clearly. That's why you are facing what you are facing. If I tell you some of the things we faced when we were coming up, I'm telling you the fact, I never knew we would get to this point. That's why I'm always a thanksgiver. At this point, I am still thankful. If somebody says, I'm not trying, me, I'm thanking God. Because I never knew that I would get to this point. Even Elijah didn't know that God he had planned for his life. But most of you, you know, you focus on the enemy. Ah, why are they here? The reason why the enemies are there, they want to tackle you. What do they want to take from you? They want to take the ball. That ball is your destiny. That ball is the gift of God for your life. That ball is the plan of God for you. That ball is the dream that God has invested in you. Can I tell you the truth? You may not even know it. You may not know. Look at the man that was given one talent. He was angry because they gave him one. He didn't know that. There's one part of us that God knows that we don't know about ourselves. It is only God that knows our capacity. You don't give up on life. You don't give up on life. Now, you see those people sitting on the bench. They don't have opponents. Do you know why? The ball is not in their possession. That's why they are sitting on the bench looking at you. You two, you are looking at some people that, why are they not facing what I'm facing? They may be on their own bench. But you are on the field. You still have the ball of success in your possession. Some people are not on the field. They are coaches. They are, they are expired players. They'll be telling you, why not like this? Why not like this? They are not on the pitch. They can't understand what you are facing. Their own season have expired. They don't have enemy again. So don't compare yourself with when you see people, you see some things about them, you are saying, why me? Why me? I'm telling you the truth. It's because the ball of success is still within your possession. That's the first thing God said I should come and tell you this morning. The ball of success is in your possession. And as long as it is there, opponents will come. Imagine, after Elijah had successfully killed 450 prophets of Baal, Jezebel threatened him and he fled. One Jezebel. Not two, one Jezebel. Now, the second thing that God said I should teach you, look up and learn from it as I am. Listen, have you noticed that, if you know football very well, skillful players, eh, are always, they always suffer several injuries. As we talk now, Nema is injured. Osimen just came out of injury. Do you know why skillful players are always injured easily? It's because they don't understand how to play the game called football. The game of football, I'll come back to my message, is a game that a team should play. Do you know why people like Pio Sikedia didn't last? Daniel Omokachi didn't last. They all were forced into early retirement because of serious injuries. Do you know why? They were holding too much to this thing. And I said, Lord, of what is that relevant to us? And God said to me, son, everybody look up and learn. When the ball of possession, of success, is in your possession, hear me. 
you must learn and understand that to succeed for long on earth, you must learn to work with other people. You notice that, listen, Brother Femi, come, stand somewhere here. If the ball is passed to my possession now, and they gather, and I say, Femi, they will rush. I can change position. And he taps it to the front. I will have been able to outsmart this. Because when I pass to him, hear me, hear me, I'm going somewhere. The enemies will move. Then I will free myself. He can cross the ball to where I am and I will move again. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to teach the people and to learn from? He said, teach the people to know the need for relationship. You cannot run the race of destiny alone. Do you notice Elijah died because he was alone? Elijah thought he was alone. He didn't have anybody. So when there was pressure on him, there was nobody he could pass the ball to. I will answer your question. I know some of you are saying, Pastor, you don't understand what people have done to me. I will still answer your question. If you know what people have done, Pastor, you won't talk about relationship. My best friend took my fiancé, sir. My best friend, sir, stole my customers, sir. The man I employed to manage my business stole my clients. Pastor, you do, if you understand what you are saying, you won't tell me to relate. I will answer your question. If you hold on to the ball of success and walk alone, you'll be injured in the race of destiny. And if care is not taken, you might not recover. You need friends. You need protégés, those that will learn from under you. You need staffs, people that will work with you. At all levels. You need clients. You alone cannot be the managing director, the chairman, the branch director, the HR, human resource manager, the secretary, if you are like that, they will tackle you and you will die before your time. But still, I know there's a question in your heart. Pastor, you don't understand what people have done to me. Sir, they have hurt me. Yes. We are not disputing that. Me too, I've been hurt several before. Sir, staffs have stolen from me. I'm not disputing that. Staffs have stolen from me too before. Sir, they betrayed me. I'm not disputing that. We've given a church to a, a pastor to go and pastor. And the pastor eventually, I got there to preach and they told me one day that you are not our pastor. He's our pastor. I'm not disputing that. But you know what you did wrong? That made you to fall into wrong hands. Let's see what happened to Elijah. Go to the book. That same chapter 19. First, Samuel, uh, First Kings 19. Let's start to begin to read 14 to 18. Because some of you are still holding. I want to stay alone. Pass me the ball. I want to stay alone. I'm staying alone. I have skill. Pastor, you don't understand. I can dribble them like this. Oh, I can dribble them. You don't understand. I can use all my skills to show them that you, you are too small. I'm, I'm more than, uh, they will tackle you. They will tackle you. They will break your ankle. That was what Elijah was doing when he killed 450 prophets. Tell us, ah, but boy, good God. Ah, oh, good. Oh, good. Show me the scripture. Where are you now? First Kings 19. They've forgotten the main chapter. From verse 14. We are going to read to verse 18. And he said, I've been very jealous for you, Lord. Because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. Thrown down thy altars. And slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. I mean, a And they seek my life 
to take it away. That's what you are thinking. Everybody is corrupt. Mugba member is she? What that mean? Mugba rata. What that mean? He shared him by name. Mojuto frami. My ati benio. My ati benio. It's wrong too. You are holding on to the ball. And he said, I've been very, no, next verse, 15. We'll stop at 18. Show me next verse. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, let's count, anoint who? His cell to be king over Syria. Say one. Next verse. Take note of the number. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. Say two. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Melola. Wow. Shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Say three. Verse 17. Verse 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay. And he that escaped the sword, sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. Don't forget we have counted that many. Three. Now don't forget Elijah was saying, I am the only one who... 18, 18, 18, be fast. I don't have all the time. Verse 18. Yet I have left me, how many? 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which had not kissed him. Which means Elijah did not know that 7,003 people were in the land that he could pass the ball to. There were 7,003 people in the land that he could walk with. But he allowed his experience with the people he had given the ball to that wasted it to say no. Huh? Ah, but Seven thousand and three people are still left. Don't let what people have done to you make you think there is nobody again on that. God sees seven thousand and three. Pastor, family has, has has betrayed me. There are people that can be more than family. You know where you made the mistake. That was where Elijah made the mistake. Elijah was. Praying the wrong prayer. Elijah was saying, I want to die. You are saying, why me? What was he supposed to be praying? Lord, please send help. If he had been saying, Lord, send help. 7,003 people were ready for the ball. There is somebody that has what you need. The person is looking for somebody that is as faithful, faithful as you are. Some of you, you have a company. Somebody does not have the vision to start a company. He's looking for a faithful company owner that he can manage company for. Only God knows them. Some pastors don't have calling to start church. They have been battered by several general overseers. So that's why they had to go and set up a church of battered evangelical mission. But in their inner heart, they are praying, Lord, if I can get a geo with a vision, a geo that will pay me my salary on time, and this is a geo who has suffered from a son and that battered the ministry. He said, I will no longer allow anybody to work with me that is not a product that I raised by myself. Say after me, God, say I have 7,003. I didn't hear you. Instead of saying, Lord, why me? Why not say, Lord, send help?
I will tell you this story. The man permitted me to share it, even with his name. He said, Pastor, tell them in church. The owner of Brighton Hotels. He said, sir, I needed 40 million naira to clear a, con a container. I approached the bank that they should borrow me 40 million. The bank manager told me that the process would take two months. I tried to hasten it because my container will come in within two weeks. He said, I was begging the manager in his office that just two weeks my container will come. He said, sir, there's nothing we can do. Two months the process will take. Not knowing that somebody was in the bank manager's office. He said, when he went home, he was thinking of what to do. He got a call in the evening. Can you meet me at so and so club in the evening? This evening? He said, yes. Who are you? He got to the club. He said, the man said, do you recognize me? He said, no, sir. I was in the manager's office when you were talking about a loan. How much is bank interest on 40 million? He said he told the manager. The man. The man said, okay, can you pay 2% on 40 million? How long do you want to use it? Six months. How much is 2% of 40 million? I think that should be about 800 or so. Mathematicians. Sir? 800,000. Can you pay 800,000 eh, in six months' time? He said, yes, sir. He said, so he took the money. The man gave him a check. He went to clear it. The container came. He sold it. After he sold the container, his 40 million naira was ready. And the 800,000, I wrote the check of 40 million, the interest of 800,000, and called the man to meet them at the same club. They got to the club. He gave the man the 40 million naira check and the 800,000 naira check. The man smiled. He said, I asked the bank manager about you. He said, you are a very serious-minded young man. And I wish to contribute to your life. You know what? Give your wife this 800,000 naira for shopping. Go and use this 40 million again for another six months. No interest. God still has 7,300. He said well, he used it for three months. He was had enough. He now called the man. Please, sir. Can we meet? The man said, what happened? He said, I don't need this money again. He said, the man now said, any time you need money, call me. Instead of shouting, Lord, why me? Why not say, Lord, send help? What do you need that God doesn't have? Is it the company, your company staffs? Ask the Lord. Stop thinking that you can last long working alone. You can't. If Nema had not been selfish, could he sing jury phone? Every time he had possession of the ball, he wants to show a new skill. Are you learning something? Five lessons to pick from this story. Five lessons to pick from this story. Number one, never allow anything to make you think you have had enough. Don't ever allow anything to make you think like that. Don't ever allow no matter what you think you are facing. I've had enough. I'm done. It was because Elijah said, I'm done, that God said, okay, go and anoint Elijah. 
that that mantle you are throwing away, somebody is willing to receive. And look at when Elisha received the mantle. He killed, if I, he organized a party. Ah, he could see Elijah and Safun. Ne Elijah she party at Iba. Small machine or here. So your first lesson, never allow anything to make you think you have had enough. Suicide should never be an option. Don't ever think like that. Even if there's a medical report that says you are going to die, wait for that death to come first. I was telling one of our sons, he was owing three banks. His business crashed. And he called me, Papa. One of the banks have decided to arrest me. You know what I told him? I said, follow them. But don't make any promise on that duress. Tell them truly you are owing, but you don't have capacity to pay now. While you are doing that, I'll get you a lawyer. And while he was doing that, I informed the lawyer. The man is of blessed memory now. He told his young lawyer to go to the station. And they got a uh, court, is it court injunction you call it, to declare the man bankrupt. And he went to tender it. This man is bankrupt. For now. And so Nin Kotuli is the for now. Kill any coa call undertaking for to a fillet, Titi di But you know some people, ah, he could yaja sin law. Eh, one of my famishes, se could moja be say, my worry. Obas on your lay worry. She could part of the president in Nigeria. Tell three people around you. With Jesus in me, I know I will make it. You are not taking, you are not talking like you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. So that should not be an option. Now, those people that have committed suicide because they don't have womb in those days, didn't know that there's going to be surrogate. If you wait, there will be an option for you. You know, surrogate is that somebody help you carry. And when they check the gene of the child, everything will match your own. And those who have lost their tubes in those days, they didn't know that there's going to be IVF. IVF, they will pass, bypass the, the tubes to insert the egg. Second lesson from this story. Stop thinking you are alone. That nobody understands you. That nobody is willing to help. Stop that kind of thought. I'm alone. Nobody understands me. Nobody is willing to help. Stop that kind of thinking. That kind of thinking will drive you more into isolation. And I always tell our people, the devil that will destroy you will first make you to isolate. If he succeeds to make you to isolate, you are destroyed. Isu to ba fe pa irun o ma fe koko je ko oro pe ko da wa to ba se ase ori lati mu e da wa o ti pa irun. You know, see young ladies, it is that feeling of you are alone that those small small boys will put in your memory that will make you not to tell your mothers who toast you. Mommy only understand. Only understand. Mass of mommy can motivate by sorrow now. Only keep so just see Step up now. Oh, John Monla, she might be calling of mommy and mommy, mommy, like that toast me. Oh, just see me. Ah, if you feel isolated, you I always tell my children, I'll keep telling them. What can you toast here? You cannot tell me, tell your mommy.
And I know that the devil doesn't have a new trick. What he does is to modernize his tricks. He will repackage the old one. So if you begin to tell us, uh, you see, mommy, you see, my boyfriend said this, the boy said this to me, we know where he's going to land. Say, come, 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 come. Our condemn shower, man, but you are bread at a caralade, or at a shower, at a bread at a caralade, flower, no, in image, a caralade, what is it? You are protein, and only if it's in the team, protein, coconut, like your jet. It's true. What a call, the package, me. Tony. So we always said, tell us. Don't let any devil make you feel. Elijah see had, he didn't know. 7,003. Thank God for them. How many? 7,003. So stop thinking, I'm alone. If you think you're alone, you die alone. You won't open up for relationship. Number three, third lesson. As long as you judge people by your standard, you will remain alone. As long as you judge people by your standard, you will remain alone because your standard will resist them. Sheko ye kumo tuba je ke mini tuba je pe mini iru aro yin se ma ti pe won ma ki won pe a se won na sheko ye kumo ko ye ko nkin e wo mi ni ba so re mo that's your standard Ajo wo moto can you imagine can you imagine Kumale Kumale mo so on so so okay on do king so wo moto abi mi ni ba ni mo mi ni ba ni mo that is your standard Elomi wa te ba bi won I have a friend like that bo bo at bo ministers conference that he join law o man gba gbe wallet e si no moto during offering time offering time pastor for me change me wallet me wa no moto wallet e o si la ku ere during offering time Komuti momo or emini. You can't walk this walk alone. You need to know how to pass the ball. When the prayer of life is on you, there should be the mix of people you sit, you gist, you laugh, and it will go. But if you keep judging them by your standard, you won't have friends. That's what God told me. That's why in that we judge people by our standard. That's your standard. And you know that there are some of you, the reason why your marriage is not perfect, why your marriage is struggling, is that you are judging your spouse. By your standard. Beloved, do you know what killed Nigerian football? Right from the days of the Omokachis. All of them decided that Rashidi Yekini doesn't join them in the labor. Or have you forgotten? All of them decided, Rashidi Yakini, he will score the goal and be running alone. He will not celebrate with us. And everywhere, Rashidi Yakini, Rashidi Yakini, Rashidi Yakini, Rashidi Yakini. So the, the team decided will not pass the ball. But they forgot that if you give Rashidi Yakini, a Rashidi Yakini, three passes, he will score one. And you know who started it? The boss. If you know football, you understand. Who is the boss? Stephen Keshi. Go 
gradually our football started to die. Please don't judge people by your standard. Somebody is listening to the message. He will keep quiet to enjoy it. Somebody will have to shout to enjoy it. If somebody will say, yes, oh, preach it. If you judge him by his standard, you throw him away. Number four. Fourth lesson. Always present the right request to God. Stop praying the wrong prayer. The prayer of Elijah was, I am tired. I want to die. God took ministry for him. Go answer his prayer. And give his calling to somebody else. You to stop saying, why me? And start praying the right prayer. Lord, send help. Because God is committed to give you what you consistently ask him. And lastly, always be willing. Brother Femi, to pass the ball. He's there. I'm here. Always be willing to pass the ball so that you can have time to reposition yourself. Now, those of you that are company owners, learn to know when you need a secretary so that you can have time to reposition. Learn to know when you need a manager so that you can have time to reposition. Now, in relationship, learn to know when you need to open up. Listen, there are some times you just need to be sincere. Open up to your friend. All right? I'm not calling you because I need money. I don't understand what is happening. I do business, but this business is just it's going back to zero point. Why am I always needing help? Your order may not give you money. Your order may open your eyes to see. It's like, okay, sit down. My friend, let's talk. Have you checked your sales point? Have you compared it with your expenses? Do you understand planning? Do you understand savings? Are you a tighter? If you are not willing to pass the ball, they will tackle you. They will bring you down. I was discussing with my deacon. We're just discussing. I was just discussing. The reason why I will share this is because what he said blessed me. And I believe it will bless you. <laughs> now, we're discussing. You have what on your birthday. You blessed me. You didn't know. That's what we also use in our home. But, you know, if I am the one saying this, what we do, so I'm saying, we have to look at my man, my pastor, and one. He said, sir, when we establish our school business, I and my wife, we agreed. From this business, the home expenses will be met. Abisa, he said, my wife, from that business, is the one buying food stuff. I don't put money down for food at home again. I clap for him. Mm -mm. Do you know that some wives don't understand? They believe that the husband will buy matches. The husband will fill gas. The husband will pay electricity bill. The husband will pay children's school fees. The husband will pay house rent. 
The husband will provide clothes for the children. You know why I will not talk me and mama? You know we are your pastors. You think because we are that spiritual. Abi, what I'm saying, Dickin. Oh, if I say Dickin, they'll say Dickin because they are Dickin and Dickness. Is it because you are Dickin and Dickness? He said, she sat down with the wife. Less, less, less. And it was settled. So that, he said, I can face other things. He said, our firstborn is in the university. I raised some part of the money. She raised some from the school to pay for his school fees. Is that not wisdom? What has he done? He has passed the ball. But if there is no structure of passing the ball in your family, you want to kill the man. If the man should die, you become a widow. And if you become a widow, you have not learned on how to raise and sponsor your family. Your children will begin to suffer because it is the man that has been doing it. Some wives don't even know the amount that the children pay for school. And now, I mean, tell my school fees, me, my time, my son, Baba one. Ah, Baba one, so only me tell my BT, I want to landlord, you want to marry around, Baba one. Ah, me tell my BT, I want to will never be, Baba one. And your brothers, Emma, be sister, Baba one. Sister, till you're ready to get your passport. Are you sure you are here? Ah, she mutu ti wa she in nearby. Ah, my brother she our sister. Oh, messing with she our. Oversize. Hmm. I want ya ni. It's more we kill ya. I want ya. Oh yeah, come back to the message. You must be willing to pass the ball. When I'm talking about passing the ball, because some of you are getting me wrong, you'll be thinking that you need someone to carry the body of your life. No. The person will still pass the ball back. But when you pass the ball, it's to drive the enemies towards that direction so that you can reposition. Mr. Spice, are you here? Say here. Say here. That's the last lesson. Be willing to pass the ball. I told you, I've shared with you before. I have a particular age in my mind that I will retire from active preaching. I want to spend the rest of my life producing the coming ministers. So I will retire into Bible school. I'm building the structure for it. If I went, God's finished speaking to me. It answered a lot of my questions. I needed pastors. I have vision for branches. I needed pastors. God said, pass the ball. You can't raise all the pastors you need. Do you know how, how many years it takes to raise one pastor? The pastor Yemisis, Pastor Bolus, Pastor Evangelist Funkes. You know how many years it took me to raise them? The ones sitting in front of me here. Do you know how many years? We, if we have to wait for the number of years, some people have trained them, the people, but because of past experience, I want to limit myself. Be willing to pass the ball. If you know you are not good with finance, you are the type, if you open an account, you will still go back and collect it. You need help. Pass the ball to somebody that can help you to save. Somebody that you have respect for. That when they open the accounts for you, no transfer, no ATM, no withdrawal, and let them receive the alert. You need help. So when you want to go to say, in free, okay. I really at 1,000. Oh, keep to the buy. Or you want to go to the bank and say, Mama, I'm free. 
Imagine, Lord, the one I question. You need them. Look up. Stand up. Stand up. One of us in the church passed me back the ball. He came with, uh, he went to buy, he, came to, he went to buy rice. Bought rice, fried rice, jello rice, meat, coleslaw. For me, my wife, and my children. Ah, I said, bro, that's bro precious. What are you celebrating? He says, sir, you taught us that you don't pray for rent. You plan for rent. The savings that I had for my rent, I just went to pay it. He says, so sir, I want to thank you with this pack. Which is surrendering to me. World 2023 next year. I said, how much is the rent? Almost half a million. He said, I, you taught us to save. You don't, you don't pray for rent. He says, my brother, you will let me to do. It means you didn't pass the ball. Tell your neighbor, pass the ball. Have you learned something today? Are you sure you learned? You are not talking. It's only that day where I see joy in his face. All of you, uh, you are not, you are, you are, it's like you are angry with me. But you know me now. You know that the kind of pastor you have, whether you are angry or not, my conclusion is you have entered this service. You have had this one. This one you have had. You cannot omit it. Abby? Go back home. And meditate over those five lessons. Last year, when my daughter gained admission to Lee City, I needed help to pay. The bright man helped me. As she was going into 200 level, it would be a full, it would be foolish of me to now go back to him again and say, Sir, I need help. Now she's going to 200 level. You shouldn't ask for help over the same thing more than once. Because if the first one met you of a sudden, the second one you should be prepared for. But the second one I was prepared. Pass the ball. If you don't pass the ball to me now, whatever I'm preaching, you will close your ear. You won't hear me. I told my wife, I'm saying all these things so that you can learn. That the level work now, if, I'm at, if I achieve the 50, no, the number of extra 25 in second term, I will give them an HM so that I can stay in my office. Because I want to pass the ball so I can last. She be talking two times two, one, two, uh, two, two times two, uh, two times two, one, two, two times two, two, four, two times three, six. Matic Bible scriptures in my preaching for you. Can't they be gone? But it's like a revelation. Genesis. Echo this man, the Sokatua of the. Hey, my mom, listen, sir. We are not in mass class, you. Yes, even those people you pass the ball to, hear me. Even when they are making mistakes, allow them to make their mistakes. Correct them in the mistakes they have made. But pass the ball again. If the team had sat with Rashidi Yekini and talked to him severally over him being selfish and put the team spirit ahead, they wouldn't have killed that football. Now let's take these prayers. Remember we are fasting today and we are praying for the month of April. The month of April is a month of financial abundance and 